What's going on guys, it's David here and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the Nike Metcon 7 and do me a favor before we hop into today's video, make sure to hit that like, comment and subscribe button uh, if you enjoyed today's content because that lets me know I'm creating the kind of content that you guys want to see. All right guys, so as I mentioned today, we are going to be taking a look at the Nike Metcon 7 and this is the seven this is the seventh model of the nike metcon that has come out technically there's other variations of the metcon right uh, but this is the flagship crossfit shoe that nike has put out and with it come a lot of changes that are both functional as well as aesthetic and i think there's a lot of things that i really like about this shoe that have changed and i'm really excited to get my hands and get my feet uh, more appropriately into the shoe. Now, one of the first things that I'm really excited about that has changed with the Metcon is the update to the toe box. And this isn't something that has been explicit as far as Nike saying it in the product details for the shoe, but this is something that I noticed when picking up this shoe compared to my Metcon 5. Um, I didn't buy the sixes or the seven, yeah, the sixes, but um, for the most part, it's the same shoe. Um, but if you notice, the toe box on this shoe is actually a little bit wider than the toe box on the uh, five. And that's something that I'm really excited about because for the most part, I have not really been able to train in Metcons for very long because of the really narrow toe box. Um, and so I'm excited to be able to get back into this shoe just for that reason alone. Um, if you've seen my other videos, I haven't been that uh, nice when it comes to um, Reebok and talking about uh, Reebok shoes. But one thing I do have to admit when it comes to shoes is that Reebok has, has been a little bit more friendlier in the toe box area for those of us that have wider feet. So to have a Metcon now that has a wider toe box is something that I'm really, really excited about. On top of the wider toe box, Nike has also widened the heel base of the Metcon. And this is supposed to help with stability for lifts. You know, when you're doing your weightlifting movements, snatch, clean and jerk, um, this is supposed to help with that. Um, in addition to the update to the heel, uh, they've also added a permanent hyperlift um, insert in the shoe, as opposed to in previous models like the uh, Metcon 5, the Metcon 6, you had insoles that you could swap in and out of the shoe that you could use during the times that you are lifting, when you're squatting, when you're snatching, clean and jerking. I'm really excited about this also because when I wear my Metcon 5s, I typically don't swap out the inserts. While I think it's a really cool idea and I, I really like that they gave us that option, I'm also kind of glad that Nike kind of probably picked up and realized that people probably weren't using the inserts as much as they thought they were um, and just decided to give us a permanent hyperlift insert. Uh, to be honest, I didn't, I haven't used the hyperlift inserts. So I'm looking forward to seeing how the hyperlift inserts or the hyperlift um, responds with weightlifting. Um, and I'm gonna be doing a lot of weightlifting in these uh, and just checking them out and seeing how these function. So that's something, again, I'm really excited about is just the update to better weightlifting performance uh, with this shoe. In addition to those changes to the heel, uh, Nike has also added a layer of React cushioning uh, to the shoe. And this is something that's really cool as well because if you're familiar with Nike's running line, specifically the Pegasus, which is probably Nike's most popular and one of their older running shoes, that's actually what they use in the Pegasus is the Nike React Foam. Uh, so you have that here. So when you are doing your runs, let's say you're doing 800 meter sprints, um, you're doing 400 meter sprints, whatever, uh, you're going to have that cushioning uh, when you are running. In my opinion, while that is a really good thing, I would also suggest uh, after having picked up running this past year, uh, you're probably better off of having a more uh, individual running shoe as opposed to having a CrossFit shoe that does everything. Like you're not gonna get the best of, of a running shoe, but if you are looking for the best bang for your buck, I will say that's probably gonna be a selling point on this shoe uh, for if you should pick this up or not. Probably one of the more upfront changes Nike made to the shoe were the updates to the grip of the shoe, adding way more grip 
uh, more rubber around the shoe for increased traction, specifically with it relating to rope climbs. Um, I think having a CrossFit shoe that has rope climb technology is probably going to be one of those more important features on the shoe. Um, if the shoe doesn't really have that, that is actually something I would be really concerned about with regards to how long that shoe is probably gonna last in the gym. Now, some gyms don't have rope climbs. Uh, they don't have ceilings tall enough to install those. So sometimes, you know, for some people, that's not necessarily an important um, factor when it comes to a shoe, but just know with this shoe, you have that. And it's all along the medial side, as well as the lateral side of the shoe. So you have a lot of protection here when it comes to uh, doing row climbs and just having that extra traction. Again, that I think is another really great selling point for this shoe. Now onto the upper of the shoe, the shoe is basically wrapped in mesh with uh, almost like a wax like overlay on the shoe, which really I think is important with regards to the uh, durability of the shoe. Um, again, I think um, it, it has a lot of breathable elements to it, but um, to be honest, I would honestly prefer a shoe that isn't mesh. Um, I would honestly prefer something that maybe has a little bit, a little bit less breathability. Um, I don't really think breathability is as a big selling point as these companies think there, there are. I would rather have a shoe that I can wear if let's say for example, in the Midwest where you do have storms in the summer, um, you, you never know, you might go for your workout and you have 800 meter runs and it starts raining on you while you're outside and I don't want my foot getting wet. And that's something that's important to me. And so, um, you know, that is something that is, you know, here on the shoe is that you have this mesh overlay. Um, you do have um, other texturized overlays and more of these like high wear areas where, um, you know, you might start to see things fall apart a little bit or, um, you know, it's just a little bit more where it takes place in those areas. Uh, but overall, I mean, the shoe is very lightweight. Um, the mesh overlay adds to or removes a lot of that weight. Uh, the other thing too with the upper of the shoe is the lacing system. So the lacing system does have flywire. However, the difference here is on previous models, you had flywire cables on both sides. Um, and this model, instead of having it on both sides, you have flywire on this side. And then on the inside, the uh, lacing system or the tightening system is on the inside. I am not sure if this is still, I'm assuming this is still considered a uh, flywire. Uh, however, it's just on the inside of the shoe as opposed to the outside. So you're gonna get a little bit more of a tighter fit, I think, compared to the other models. Um, and the inner of the shoe is basically like a booty, um, which I, again, I really like. I don't like having my tongue separate from the um, internals of the shoe just because your tongue falls all over the place. It makes it a little bit harder to get more of that uniform fit to the shoe. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think these additions and these changes are, again, just more and more selling points for why if you've stepped away from the Metcon, you might wanna come back and check out this shoe. Probably one of the last most important features of this shoe is the handstand clip. I don't know how many shoes that I've bought haven't had handstand clips on them, and I don't know why companies are making shoes that don't have handstand clips, especially if they're making these shoes for CrossFit. Granted, not everybody can do handstand uh, push-ups. Newer people can't do handstand push-ups, but this handstand clip definitely does make a difference when you are doing handstand push-ups because it's gonna reduce the friction um, when you're up against the wall, especially like, let's say for example, if you your gym has brick walls, you know, there might be a little bit more friction there as opposed to other places that have different types of walls. Um, so again, when it comes to technology, and this is kind of going into my overall first impression of the shoe, when it comes to technology, I think Nike really does a good job of incorporating good technology into their shoes that are very functional. And that's why I've always considered Nike to be a better shoe company compared to Reebok. Um, Reebok has been the king of CrossFit since CrossFit's inception, basically. However, I feel like Nike is really trying to make a shoe that performs well, that gives you what you need, doesn't have too many bells and whistles, but also has enough bells and whistles that make you want to pick this over other shoes. 
I also wanted to uh, touch on the Nike Metcon 7 Matt Fraser PE edition. Um, so these are those shoes that I just <laughs> brought up. But um, if you are concerned or worried or wondering which shoe you should get, to be honest, these are basically the same shoes. Um, I would really only say get these if you want this colorway. Um, the one thing about this shoe that I did notice when I first um, got these in hand was that um, the glue on the Matt Fraser seemed not to be very clean. I don't know if that's gonna affect the durability of the shoe and all the different areas where there are seams and there's glue, the overlays and things of that nature, but I'm not planning on wearing these. These are just gonna be shoes that I stock, basically. I uh, pull out every once in a while just for a casual fit. Um, it's the same thing I've done with the other Matt Fraser PEs that I have as well. Um, but again, I think any of the Metcon 7s that you decide to purchase, whatever the colorway is, um, I think you should expect to get a shoe that's probably gonna function very well. Um, I'm planning on training in these for the next week. Um, I'm going to do an update video. Uh, before I post the update video for this, I am gonna do an update video for the Strike Movement Elijah Muhammad uh, Hayes Trainer, uh, and that will be up before this one. But uh, again, guys, uh, thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. If you guys have questions, make sure to hit those comments down below, and as well as subscribe if you guys like my stuff and like my channel. I know I'm the most hated CrossFit YouTuber uh, based on uh, my uh, old videos, but you know I like making these kinds of videos. I like talking about shoes. I like picking up shoes. I'm a sneakerhead, so this is kind of what I enjoy, and I want to share that with you guys. So let me know down in the comments what you guys want to know, what you guys want to see, if there's things that you guys want me to pick up, and I will try to get those videos out for you guys. And so without wasting any more time, may your barbells be heavy and your coffee be black. This is David, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.